This is Sideline Radio with Shaki Verado, bonus episode number five. Five tips for busy sports moms on the go. Okay, Google, what's the weather like? You're listening to Sideline Radio, a podcast by Sideline Society, where we firmly believe it takes a village to raise a child and a sideline to support an athlete. In a lifestyle where schedules are hectic, to-do lists are overwhelming, and it's always time to go, sports mom of three and sideline guru, Shaki Verado, will help you navigate your life on the sidelines and redefine what organized chaos should look like. Here's your weekly ticket to take a time out, huddle up, and hear real talk from others who get it, while learning the best tips, hacks, and strategies on the sideline one season at a time. If you're ready to tackle your crazy schedule and make memories instead of migraines, you're in the right place. Here's your host, chief sideline hacker, target enthusiast, and french fry lover, Shaki Verado. What's up, sideline hackers? Shaki here, the one that rhymes with hockey, and it's short for Shakira, like the singer. I am here to help you navigate your life on the sideline one season at a time because I'm obsessed with your sideline success, plain and simple. So welcome back to Sideline Radio. Thank you for joining me today. I, I seriously just can't even believe it's Friday already. I swear this week has just zoomed right on by, and probably because I've been in bed for the majority of it, <laughs> trying to get over this flu bug, Yeah, it's the pits. But don't cry for me, Argentina. Don't cry for me. I had to make sure I got my butt out of bed. I'm actually feeling a lot better. And I wanted to make sure I recorded this episode for you. And a little disclaimer, my voice probably doesn't sound the same because I'm getting over this, but um, I am here. So seriously, though, it is almost scary how fast time goes by. And honestly, it just reminds me that time is fleeting. We only have one life and we owe it to ourselves and to our loved ones, especially our children, to make the most of it. Do you all realize that this is the only life that we're given? Like the only one. We're not given a second chance. Just thinking about it has me all up in my feelings, but I'm serious. I absolutely love watching my boys play, watching them compete, thanking God for their ability to get out there and challenging themselves to improve, work in a team, to learn and to lead. It's a blessing. And that's the reason I'm here, the reason Sideline Society exists. I want every sports mom to be able to enjoy that feeling, to enjoy that time without stressing, without being overwhelmed, or thinking about what's missing. I just want to be a resource for you as a sports mom. I know that this role is already ridiculously busy. It's crazy, it can get wild. But it's the best experience of my life, and I simply would not trade it for anything, and I want the same for you. Okay, I'm done with that. I'm just, I had to get that out of there. You know, I get a little passionate about things. I'm sorry. But either way, I'm still excited that it's Friday. We don't have any sports events going on this weekend, but I do get to spend some time working out the details to the upcoming giveaway that I'm having and the challenge that I've been talking about forever. Seeing as this weather can't really make up its mind, we just might skip skip uh, spring altogether. So I've got to go ahead and get this spring cleaning slash organization challenge up and running. So you'll hear more about that soon, I promise. If you're interested in joining or even just finding out more about it, uh, go ahead and email me. You can email me at shaki at sidelinesociety.com and I'll include you in the list for all the information coming up about it. Now, before we jump into the content for today, I just wanted to thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen in. I truly appreciate you. I hope that you're finding value in this podcast. And I hope that it's a resource for you as a sports mom. And I want you to remember that this is for you, for you as a sports mom. So if there is something that you would like for me to cover, something you want to hear, someone you want to hear from, something you have feedback on, just hop over to our Facebook community, Sideline Hackers, and let me know. I'm all ears, seriously. Okay, so today I'm back with another edition of Take 5 Friday, and today I'm going to give you five tips for us busy sports moms on the go. 
But before we jump into the tips, I want to share this resource with you. You know I've talked about it before, the Ultimate Sports Mom Survival Bag Checklist. It's one of our most requested resources, and I want to make sure you get a chance to download it before we move on to another resource. You can get your hands on it right now at sidelinesociety.com. There's even a step-by-step video that goes with it. So again, just hop on over to sidelinesociety.com, download the checklist, and then click to pop over to the YouTube video and watch the video. And please don't forget to subscribe while you're over there. Okay, for my tips of the day, let's go ahead and do this. Tip number one is a weather app. Get yourself a weather app, especially, especially if you live in ridiculous climates like Northern Virginia. (laughs) Number two, a game day checklist. I've created a game day checklist that you can use to prep for every single game day. It's a simple checklist, but it helps you make sure that you're not missing any key items, okay? You can download it by going to sidelinesociety.com slash podcast slash bonus five. Tip number three is the survival bag. I talk about this all the time. In fact, I just mentioned it, and I'm actually gonna do a giveaway of a survival bag coming up this week. Um, so that if you you know you don't want to make it yourself you can make sure you can join us over in the facebook group and you can get signed up to get this giveaway i'm doing some awesome goodies included um and one actually rhymes with punter (laughs) okay and give you another little hint i was super excited about this uh in the past week i did a little shopping haul of it of this brand so i wanted to give that little hint out there for the giveaway but I'm super excited about it if you want to join us please again come over to our Facebook group and you'll get all the info about it Um, my final two tips for today actually feed into this story that I want to tell you about that happened to me Um, and so I'm just going to tell you the tips and then I'll jump into the story but the two tips are number four have grace okay and number five have fun and try to live in the moment So in the interest of time, I laid these top five tips out for you first um, so that you can go ahead and download the checklist that goes along with the episode if you don't have the time to continue to listen to the story. It's not going to be super long, but I just wanted to let you know that. Um, But if you do, I actually have a story that goes along with this episode and makes more sense for the tips that I'm giving you. So here it goes. So I'd like to preface the story by saying I did learn my lesson, okay? I did, I promise. So I did everything right according to my standards. The day before, I had packed the diaper bag, I gathered all my cooler items, I even laid the stroller by the door um, the night before. Hobby's uniform was clean, it was laid out, he had his socks, his leggings, his gloves, everything was in place. Jew wasn't playing that day, so I didn't have to worry about what he would need. And I was ready to rock and roll. I woke up on time. Well, we woke up on time, and by we, of course, I mean me. At 7 a.m., Mike and the boys were still knocked out in bed. Even Ferguson was busy snoring when I made my first go around, but it was no matter. We had plenty of time. 15 minutes later, I was already out of the shower, and everybody is still snoring. And here's where I made my big mistake. I checked my weather app again. Now, I had checked the weather report the night before and the temperatures read slightly different, so I didn't think anything of it when they seemed to shift for the better. The weather report read a current 43 degrees Fahrenheit with a high of 62. Not too bad, right? You gotta understand, we're in Northern Virginia where we can get a blizzard one day and 80 degrees the next. We didn't even have our first frost yet at this time, so I could work with 43 degrees. Plus, it was bound to heat up by midday because Google said so, right? And we all know that Google runs the world, so there was no dispute with that. So instead of wearing my winter coat heading out the door, I slapped on my PME parent jacket. I had to represent my babies, of course. My my team colors had my jeans and my purple and green sneaks. Besides having some hand warmers and a scarf and a hat, I was going to, that was in my my kit, Uh, it was going to take about an hour and a half to get to our destination, so I already knew my seat warmer in the car would do me some justice, not to mention the coffee that I already had in my hands. So by the time I got the guys up and out the door, we had plenty of time to spare. We made our usual Saturday morning stop at Dunkin' Donuts, get some um, coffee for Mike um, and croissants for the boys and munchkins for the little one. Mike had made sure to fuel up and check the tire pressure and oil the night before, so we were well on our way. 
The time passed quickly, even though we literally had made, I'd say, four left turns in an hour and a half. <laughs> That's Virginia Rhodes for you. Eli and the big boys were all watching whatever movie for the 1500th time, and Mike was catching up on some more Shut Eye. So we were due to arrive by about 9.15. We got there with plenty of time. It was a pretty cool spot. I've never seen an outdoor sports complex next to an airport from which skydivers were jumping out of the plane. Seriously. And I actually have video of this. So you can go over to my blog at sidelinesociety.com slash blog and you can see what I was talking about. Everybody was intrigued. So I started to unload the car as we got there. My oldest took a hobby to practice with his team and Mike took a conference call. It seemed a little cold, you know, as I think about it. Um, But I was convinced it was just that because we had gotten there and I had to get off my seat warmer. The first game was scheduled for 11. We had some time to get a lay of the land, spotted the restrooms or the porta potty. I mapped out the concessions. We figured out what fields we'd be playing on. And by 11 a.m., it hit me. We were just about to start our first game and I was freezing. By now, the wind had kicked up. Skydivers were blowing every which way. And even Eli didn't want to get out of the stroller and run around. Honestly, that was my real sign. It was just too cold for him to play. I reached to double check my phone because I know Google had said it was going to be warmer out there. And sure enough, my screen read Triangle, Virginia. I had been looking at the weather report for back home, not the freaking valley that we were in. Here's my point. Youth sports can be so unpredictable. Always be prepared for anything. This is why I talk about the survival bag. This is why I talk about, you know, layers. (laughs) This story right here. So in my busy morning haste, I had decided to forego my usual instinct to wear my layers and pack for anything. Okay, this is this is where this came from. So instead of wearing my tank top under my thermals, under my suit, under my winter coat, I opted for my jeans and my sneakers and my jacket and just some light accessories. Believe me, I was smacking myself for it later and so was the wind. That wind was whipping so hard, I remember... We thought the kids would be distracted by the skydivers. No, they were instead too cold to play. They were being too distracted by the cold. They didn't want to play and you couldn't blame them. It was freezing. We ended the day three games in and frostbitten. And that's another thing. You know, we were told we would play two games at most, but no, it was three. It turned out to be a double elimination tournament. So we ended up playing the three games with the fourth being in the championship round. So the... The, my whole point here is to prepare for everything. Prepare for what you can. Especially as a team mom, your team will look to you, look to you to help you solve issues on their sideline. And I guarantee you'll feel that much more accomplished when you're prepared to help them. So to recap, tip number one, weather app. Tip number, and check it once <laughs> the night before and don't do it again. Okay, unless, you know, something's drastically different. You look outside and it's completely different. Tip number two, game day checklist. Tip number three, survival bag. Tip number four, have some grace. And tip number five, have fun and live in the moment. The tips about having grace and fun obviously came into play because we simply can't and won't always be in control of the situation. But take it for what it is, an opportunity to support and celebrate your child and learn from your experiences. I know I sure did. We ended up having a blast that day. Even though we were freezing, we got some, all got some hot chocolate. We gathered in some blankets. It was a great time supporting our boys. Um, but it really is a lesson learned. And now it's time for the post-game chat and a little encouragement with Stacey Mahoy of the Eating Curveballs for Breakfast podcast. Aloha, sports moms. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today, I just wanted to share with you a reminder that has come up for me this past week. So there are a lot of things and a lot of messages out there, lots of memes, lots of inspirational quotes, lots of mentors, coaches, and so on and so forth, teachers, authors. And still, I find myself seeing certain themes come up over and over again during certain periods of time. And these things are probably always around, but for some reason, 
they happen to stand out to me over the course of a week or two or maybe even a full month where I just keep hearing the same kinds of tidbits and messages. And this past week, it's been gratitude. Everyone talks about gratitude, I realize, right? That stuff is everywhere. But in this past week, a few very key people in a few very key interactions where I was really paying attention brought up gratitude and how powerful it is and how much it can make a tremendous positive difference in your life when you practice it, right? When you actually do it and not just for the purpose of, okay, I'm going to do gratitude so that I can get this or get that, but actually genuinely practicing gratitude. And I tend to consider myself to be a positive, thankful, grateful person. And still I find that a lot of times I'm only expressing gratitude after the fact and I'm not just waking up and just grateful before anything cool happens in the day. So I've done some journaling in the morning or just making mental notes in my head, whatever it is that you do, it doesn't matter how you do it. But my encouragement to you today is to try to do it consistently, but also if you find yourself in a frustrating challenging out of your comfort zone situation something that seems to not be resolving and or something that you can't seem to do anything about or you've tried everything and it's still not getting better I would make it a point to focus less on what's not working and then sit down clear some time each day to just immerse yourself in gratitude and really spend put forth and focus more time, more energy, more of your attention, more of your thoughts on what it is in your day, in your life that you're grateful for. Try that. See how it goes. See how it impacts your life. What have you got to lose, right? You're already in a frustrating situation. You're already stressed out. You're already you know, at a loss at some times, at some points. And I know sometimes it's super difficult. But just like we tell our kids, look, it's easy to stay positive. It's easy to stay up and encouraging when everything is going well. The challenge is, and what separates the average athletes from the great ones, is that they find a way to do it even when things aren't quite going their way or even when things get tough. So my encouragement for you today as a sports mom is practice that gratitude, right? Get per- get purposeful about it. And especially when you're going through something tough, especially when it gets a little more difficult, double down on it, get more focused on it, get more intentional about it and execute on that even more. All right. That's that's the deal for today. Thank you so much for listening. I appreciate you so much. I am truly, genuinely grateful that you're here. So thanks again all for joining me today. Please take a minute to subscribe and two more minutes if you don't mind and leave a review on iTunes. You would totally make my day if you did. Let's be honest, I thrive off of your feedback and believe me when I say it's actually something that I look forward to seeing because it really helps me to provide value to your sideline life. And fun fact, it also helps other sports moms to find us. So it would be very much appreciated if you did. Also, I'd love it if you came and joined us in our interactive community for sports moms and team moms. It's called Sideline Hackers, and we're over in Facebook in a private Facebook group. And you can join the group by going to Facebook, searching Sideline Hackers, and clicking to request to join. And don't worry, I have quick thumbs, so you'll be in in no time. You guys, if you're not joining us in our Facebook community, you're basically just missing out. It's a ton of fun, just safe place to share the show with other listeners, join in on exclusive giveaways and challenges, and to just be you as a busy sports mom who loves watching her kids play. Lastly, if you want to find me on social media, you can find me on Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook at Sideline Society and on Twitter at Shaki Verado. I'm always posting fun moments about my own sideline life in my stories. And if you tag me and use the hashtag Sideline Life, I love to repost my followers. Until next time, Sideline Hackers, keep hacking that sideline because they appreciate you for it. And so do we for all that you do. Thanks for listening to Sideline Radio. 
Dive into the show notes for this episode and all past episodes at sidelinesociety.com slash sideline radio. If you love the show, share it with the sports mom. Remember, it takes a village to raise a child and a sideline to support an athlete.